Wasn't that long ago we were all just waiting. Waiting for that new Polestar version, that baby blue performance version of Volvo's. Yes, Volvo had evolved from its econo box platforms into the amazing looking products of the late 90s and early 2000s. And with that came the R editions. And by the late 2000s and into the early 2010s, Volvo was moving in to what they saw as the performance ring. They wanted to create a brand to go up against AMG and the M squad from Germany, Volvo wanted to do it their way. And with that came the Polestar brand. But today, Polestar is much more. It's much more than a performance brand. It's something that's going to make Volvo even bigger. Autolog.net Autopod, streaming day or night, coming right at you, right here, right now. Welcome back to the Autolux Podcast. I am your host, as always, the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J. himself, coming to you from our LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook pages. Please like, share, or comment if you like this podcast or any of our stuff. Podbeam, our main host site, or in many others of your favorites. Or, if you got little ones at home, take a stop off at www.autolux.net to see one of our five children's books to help inspire your little ones to the automotive scene that we all love. Now today we're taking a look at how Volvo has transformed its performance brand into an electric brand. Now why have they done this? Like we said in our intro, looking back to the early 2000s, when Volvo started getting away from their boxy designs, they started creating the R editions. Yes, the sporty Volvo V70, V60, S60 R editions. They made those boxes look fast and go fast. But after that, Volvo, with a factory-backed team, started branding baby blue models under the Polestar brand. Now this Polestar brand was an aftermarket division similar to that of AMG or the BMW M version. But today Polestar is much more. Polestar isn't a performance brand. Polestar is an automotive brand. But why would Volvo go down this road? Why would they take their Volvo S60 World Touring Car Championship or the Cayenne Racing Edition and make it into the electric division of Volvo. Well, as we've all seen the automotive world, electric cars are starting to move in. Well, electric and hydrogen. And with that, car companies are trying to find new ways to expand upon themselves. And some of them are choosing to go it alone. Where you got companies like Toyota, General Motors, who just create electric models. But if the model fails, it can bring down the company. If the Prius didn't do well, it could diminish the brand image of Toyota. Same with the Bolt. It could diminish the brand identity of Chevrolet. They see Volvo has gone a different route. They've decided to branch out. They've gone one step past companies like BMW and Volkswagen. See where Chevrolet has made an electric car for the Chevrolet brand, Volkswagen has given its own identification. It is still a Volkswagen branded vehicle. But is the ID, ID3, ID4, ID4 Cross, ID5. See we're identifying it with its own sub-brand. But Volvo is going it alone. And with the backing of its home corporate entity Geely, Volvo is going all in. Yes, they're starting to move into plug-in hybrid versions of the Volvo models. And Volvo is one of those few companies that wants to expand itself outside of the internal combustion engine and move into the fully electric world. But to do this, they need to tread carefully. Gotta remember, Volvo isn't a full line product. They don't have something in every major field of the luxury world. They have compact, mid-size, full-size wagons, cross tracks, and SUVs, but they don't have a full lineup. When you consider them against Mercedes and BMW, who have a complete lineup of products, where they have from the micro to the extended versions of their crossover and sport utility vehicles, they also have coupe versions of nearly every model within that product range. Volvo doesn't have that, but Volvo want to expand. So does Geely. You gotta remember who Geely owns. They own Levesque. L-E-V-E-C, London Electronic Vehicles, which built the London cab, and now are getting into the cargo vans, electric. They own Lincoln Company, which is a hybrid subscription car company, which doesn't allow you to purchase them, but is mainly a subscription car company, but it's hybrid. Then you get Geely, one of the largest companies in China to push themselves into the hybrid field. They've been doing it for nearly two decades already. And then you get Volvo, the company synonymous with safety, wanting to expand into the future. And do it properly. But why take your aftermarket brand? Why use the Polestar name? Well, Polestar was essentially just a sub-brand of Volvo. They weren't a full range. And Polestar, you gotta think about it, they really only burst onto the scene in 
the early 2010s, the Baby Blue S60 showed us what Polestar can be. Now, Polestar has held itself together all the way up to 2017, but now the Polestar brands are diminishing. The R versions are becoming Volvo's main aftermarket brand, but Volvo doesn't like to promote themselves. Remember, they're a safe car company, but they also want to be seen as a green car company. They want to be seen as a caring company. Remember, it goes hand in hand, safety and caring. They want to care about the world around them. So they need an electric brand, but they don't want to go it alone because if they do it to Volvo and it fails, it can bring down the whole brand and not being a full scale company like Toyota, Volkswagen, and General Motors, they can't afford to lose. So they utilize their aftermarket brand. They use that name to create a whole brand new division to go after the electronic world. Because if this fails, Polestar can go back to being an aftermarket version on vehicles or hell, they already have the R version so they could just keep that and Polestar can just disappear. No harm done to Volvo because Polestar and Volvo are completely separate entities of each other. Where if you actually see the Polestar one, you know it's a Volvo. It is a a definite Volvo. And the Polestar 1 is a brand new $100,000 sports coupe built off a hybrid platform. Now Volvo itself doesn't have a coupe. They haven't had a coupe since the early 90s. So now entering a new marketplace with a new product and a new product image. They still have the front grille that utilizes the Volvo image. Yes, the front grille of the Polestar 1 when you put them up against the existing V90 or V60 Volvos, you can see how you can slap a Volvo grill in there. The logo will fit. Now add to this the new Polestar 2 Crosstrack sedan. It's now fully electric sedan to go up against Tesla, both the Model 3 and the Model Y. This is a product that could fail. It could fall flat on its ass. But utilizing the Polestar name, Volvo doesn't have to worry if it fails. If it succeeds, they can move into it properly. It's very similar to what Volkswagen is doing with their Seat brand. Seat is a brand that has slowly diminished. Sorry, but see it after Volkswagen had bought them had lost their brand image. It essentially was just a mid-tier brand in the Volkswagen range. It was essentially an Oldsmobile. It looked like a one step up from Volkswagen, but it really it wasn't. It was a cross between a Volkswagen and an Audi. Kind of a mid-range. Well, they use the Supra brand. And, you know, Supra has been used for so long for their aftermarket industry. But now Supra is doing the same thing Volvo has done with Polestar. They're building hybrid vehicles. And now they have the fully electric Formentor SUV. And Volkswagen has already considered the fact that as Supra succeeds beyond the capabilities of what Seat can do, then the Seat brand may disappear and merge into the Supra brand, where that name has more backing as an energy and green efficient company than Seat. See, that's a problem. Toyota has spent over 20 years building the Prius brand. They had the Prius, the Prius C, and the Prius V. Now they have an all-wheel drive Prius. Now the V and the C have diminished. And disappeared from the marketplace. But the Prius is still here. And with the technology from that, they can now move on to more hybridization of their own vehicle. But in a sense, it's Toyota. You still have to make ICE engines and they still have that brand image. They know it could take 20 to 30 years to completely flip themselves into a full scale electric world. You can't just flip a switch and change your whole corporate image over. Toyota knows this, so they have to build slowly. Now, if they were smart, they could have used the Scion brand to build this brand new image and to get a head start where eventually all they would have had to do is when signing gets too big to the fact that it's fully capable and known of as being a green company, you just start flipping a switch and changing products over to Toyota. Similar to what Volvo has plans for Polestar. Polestar may not be here forever because when you really take a look at it, its product range fits into Volvo's portfolio. The vehicles fit. They fill the niches that Volvo doesn't have. They don't have a coupe and they don't have a mid-size Crosstrek sedan. They have cross track wagons, but not sedans. And that's something they need. And by utilizing the Polestar name, Volvo can move into these niches. They can go after the markets and the holes in their market and fill it up with the Polestar name. So really, are they doing something wrong? No. Utilizing the Polestar name is easier than trying to change the perception of your product. You want a perfect example of that? Changing the perception of your product. When I was a child in the 80s, tell me about a Hyundai. Tell my parents about a Hyundai. If you told them back then in 19 1986, that Hyundai someday would build an $80,000 luxury car to go up against the Mercedes S-Class, people would laugh at you. Hell, even when the first generation Genesis sedan came out in the North American marketplace, people didn't take it seriously. It was powerful. It was luxurious. Look at the XG350. It was another product. It showed its luxury
luxury prowess, but it couldn't move into the luxury field. Hyundai was trying to move into a more premium marketplace to go up against Buick, but they couldn't. There's Hyundai still has that image. They still have that image of the Econo Box Hyundai ponies from the 80s. And knowing that, they finally decided to bring out the Genesis brand. Building a new brand and getting people into your brand and knowing that it's luxury products is easier than trying to revamp your entire product range. Toyota proved that in the late 80s when Toyota, Nissan, and Honda all created their luxury arms. Acura, Infiniti, and Lexus were a change that was required because those brands themselves couldn't build products within that price point to compete in North American marketplace because our perception is luxury is luxury, standard is standard. Whereas in Japan, Toyota can build products in the luxury stable. They could build standard products. Polestar fits this niche. So instead of Volvo going all in trying to create electric vehicles, they're utilizing a brand that they already own where all they needed was a logo to jump into the electric world. So really, in the end, when you take a look at it, is Volvo doing it right? Because there are three ways to enter the electric world. Through products, through sub-brands, or through whole new companies. And where the Prius, the ID, and the Polestar all show how companies are trying to achieve a green stable within their product range. Now, Polestar may not be here forever. Neither will Seat. They will eventually merge with their original corporate entities. But if they do fail, at least their main corporate entities won't. And just like the ID brand with Volkswagen, if it fails, it's easier to retract that sub-brand from your product range. Where Chevrolet has discontinued the Volt because of poor sales and the Bolt is having troubles. Chevrolet is having trouble trying to build its electric portfolio. Where they should essentially just bring back the Saturn brand and turn Saturn into their electric powerhouse. Similar to what General Motors is doing with Hummer. And that is what Volvo is doing with Polestar. So in the end, when you really think about it, Volvo is being really smart about how they enter the electric world, how they get the green percept. Instead of trying to change the mentality of people over decades of seeing Volvo as an internal combustion engine manufacturer, they have decided to just throw a whole brand new brand out there in the hopes that people will perceive it as its own product range and eventually merge the two back together when consumer projection has changed. It's smart. It's smart on a marketing point it's smart on a price point and it's smart for a corporate point now how i do mean for price point is with a brand new company you could set whole brand new price points chevrolet learned that when they'd had the volt and the bolt because they had to meet a specific price range for those products because you wouldn't buy a chevrolet bolt if it's forty thousand dollars compared to a bmw i3 because chevrolet isn't a brand that builds a forty thousand dollar hatchback polestar can do that for volt or volvo can so all around Around. Volvo is a smart company and for what they're doing and Geely is going to become one of the main automotive players in the next century. Geely all I have to do is finally enter the North American marketplace but with the help of companies like Lotus, Volvo and Polestar and even Lincoln Company they're going to do it and they're going to give us a greener future for all. So from all of us at Autolux Autopod we'd like to ask you to please like share or comment on our podcast. Share it to your friends tell them about what we're talking about. And if they can't find us, tell them to go to iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, Amazon Music, and hell, even Podbean to find our episodes. And if they can't find all of them, then drop by at www.autolux.net to find all of our amazing podcasts, corporate websites, children's books, and our famous end-of-the-year automotive ratings. So for myself, Everett J., and all of the Autolux team, we would like to say to strap yourself in for one fun wild ride that Polestar is going to take us on.